Today we will be discussing why increasing the definition for hemp to 1% THC content is actually really important. And this isn't just an idea, this is already being considered and done in places like Switzerland and the Czech Republic where they are looking at the 1% THC definition for hemp. So the first major consideration is a commercial one, which is we know, and I've included a link below, that more than 20% of hemp cultivated in the United States is being destroyed because it exceeds the 0.3% THC content for hemp. In addition, in South Africa, we're proposing 0.2%. So therefore, it's very likely that more, more than 20% of crops will be destroyed in this country because of exceeding this limit. The other point is, if you're ever going to consider extraction in the future from hemp sources, Having a 1% threshold allows you to develop the chemovore of the plant, the actual cannabinoids, to its full potential without ever getting to a point where you exceed the limit of maybe 0.2%. So with a 1% THC limit, we might see biomass that contains double the amount of T uh, CBD in the product than we otherwise would be expected with lower THC thresholds and limits. The other concern I really want to bring up is around testing. Firstly, it's too hard for reference laboratories and labs to get access to analytical standards in the country. So if you're going to have proficiency testing between labs, and if a lab is going to determine whether or not a farmer's crop is actually going to be destroyed, this needs to be significantly improved and more easily facilitated by the regulators. Because generally, there's a few other considerations, which is in the field, how is the flower going to be sampled? We know the most developed flower is going to have the highest amount of THC. We know when it gets to the lab that the moisture content of that flower is really going to matter in terms of the percentage THC read. And we also know the sample prep in the lab in terms of dilution factors, but it's been run GC, HPLC, and those validation of methods and the you know, deviations is going to have a big impact to do with a threshold. So how can South Africa really expect to compete with places like the United States where the threshold limit is higher at 0.3 than 0.2? We also know that the U.S. has invested significantly in terms of infrastructure, which we would still have to capitalize around. In addition, we know places like if Colombia were to now increase their hemp definition to 1% THC, they would have a significant economic advantage because they're able to generate biomass of higher amounts of cannabinoids for extraction. The only potential benefit argument I can see for 0.2% THC limit is on the export market, where essentially South African cultivators would be able to more easily export to jurisdictions because of the 0.2. However, that can be established with testing, which means you could really get a bifurcation or a split in the market where certain farmers could target cultivating for under 0.2% for export, and the rest of the farmers would be at lower risk of crop destruction if the limit was set at 1%. Now, I hope you found that useful, and if you did, I'll be sharing more comments and reviews on the channel.